Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Dan Lynch joins me. We're going to be talking Agile. We're going to be talking about Taiga I.O., a really great project to help you implement your Scrum and your Kanban and all those cool things. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Dan Lynch. Episode 335 recorded May 6th, 2016. Taiga.io. This episode is brought to you by DigitalOcean, simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com, and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS in the billing section for a $10 credit. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open-source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at StoneEdge.com, bringing you each week the movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may be using every day and totally unaware of it, projects you may have never heard of and go, oh my God, that's pretty interesting. I'm going to check that out. Uh, joining me this week is Dan Lynch. Dan, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's good to be here. Cool, cool. And where are you speaking to us from? Probably the usual spot. I am. I am in my usual spot. Yeah. If you've, if you've seen me on the show before, you'll recognise this uh, lovely veneer behind me. Veneer is that the right vista? I don't know. Something like that. Something to do with me. Uh, yeah. I'm in. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm you, in the vision. You. Vision. It could be. Couldn't it? Anyway. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm in Liverpool in the UK. Uh, in case you can't tell from my accent, uh, which is in the northwest of of England. Cool. Cool. All right. And I am in the dangerous spot of being in my apartment in Silicon Rainforest up here, uh, the place where when the sun's out, the one day a month that it comes out, comes right through the blinds right above me. So if you watched the video before and watched the crawling set of lights go across my face, you may get to watch that again this time. So anyway, but it's nice to be back home for a while. I'm actually here for a week, hanging out, uh, visiting with friends and, and taking care of stuff here. So anyway, the show is not this week in geography. The show is actually about open source software. So we have a great guest today, Pablo Ruiz. Uh, I'm guessing that's his last name pronunciation. I've probably been mangling it for the last 18 weeks. Uh, and he's going to talk to us about, I hope I get this right, Taiga.io, which is an agile system, a system to manage agile projects and Scrum and Kanban and all those magic jargon words. I think uh, if you're going to play buzzword bingo today, I think everybody's going to win. So uh, what do you know about this so far, Dan? Yeah, I've just been having a quick look. Um, I have to confess that the the whole agile thing is not my my forte. I've uh, long ago in the midst of time when when I learned development methodologies at university. I don't think think that was really that the word agile hadn't been brought into it yet, but it has since. And uh, it looks really interesting actually. The platform. One of the things I, I was really interested in the platform, which I'm sure Pablo will tell us about, is that um, it not only lets you manage the project, but if you need extra like skills, for example, say it identifies that you just don't have certain skills to finish something, it will help you try and find people to contract to do that, which is which is quite cool. I don't know of anything else that really does that quite the same way. Yeah, this sounds pretty cool. I have to admit also that I've never been in a company that has fully implemented and embraced Agile. I've been in mm. many companies that have continuous integration. I've been in many companies that have a Scrum Master that don't do Agile. I've been in many com companies that have talked about sprints, but nobody has ever done it the way I've seen it written about. I think its problem is they get like halfway into it and then they say, uh, uh, we don't, but we still want to use our bug tracker the way we've done and drive things from the bugs. And uh, mm -hmm. I tell you, so actually I've talked to, talked to Paul, Pablo about uh, adoption and how we actually get this into companies and stuff. So, and I played a little mm -hmm. bit around, a little bit around. I played, <laughs> I played around a little <laughs> bit. It's early still. It's early. The caffeine hasn't fully kicked in. Uh, with uh, Taiga, it, it sort of in um, uh, preparing for the show, uh, actually tried to lay out a couple little projects with it, but uh, I, I just don't know enough about Agile with, about that. So hopefully we can have some more description of that as well. Well, you know, we can talk forever about what we don't know. It's better to talk with someone who actually knows. But before we do that, we have a very important announcement. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, DigitalOcean. Whether you're an experienced code warrior or just getting started, you need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting. DigitalOcean provides developers with droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed quickly to host websites, web apps, 
production applications, personal projects, virtual desktops, and almost anything else you can think of with full root access. I first found out about DigitalOcean uh, back at the Scale uh, conference a few weeks back, or a few months back, because one of the big announcements they were making is that they uh, support FreeBSD now, which is my favorite uh, operating system in the cloud. And within, they make claims that within 55 seconds, you could have a server up and running. It really was just about 55 seconds from the time I entered all the information. It's uh, up and running, and I'm immediately connected to it. I now have it as a build box, so I'm actually building all my packages for my FreeBSD BSD systems directly there. And for five bucks a month for the tiniest system, it's really, really cool. It's, it's uh, awesome. So DigitalOcean was built for developers and is used by over 400,000 of them, including me. You deploy and configure your droplets via a streamlined control panel or a simple API. You can choose your OS, Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora, CoreOS, and FreeBSD. That's mine. One-click install allows you to quickly deploy apps like Django, Docker, Drupal, LAMP, GitLab, MediaWiki, Node.js, WordPress, Ghost, Magento, uh, own Cloud, uh, Ruby on Rails, and more. All the servers are built on hex core machines with dedicated ECC RAM and RAID SSD storage. That SSD is really fast. Awesome stuff. I have 20 gigs of SSD. Uh, servers can have up to 20 CPUs, 64 gigs of RAM, and 640 gigs of SSD hard drive space. Highly scalable to meet the demands of a rapidly growing application or business. Auto backups and snapshots let you easily clone, deploy, and resize droplets as you grow. You can deploy servers in all regions all over the world with gigabit speeds and 99.9 99% uptime. That's four nines. Full feature DNS management to easily manage your domains or use dedicated IPs. Web console access with HTML5 plus SSH, SFTP, and KVM VNC for virtual desktops. It's an extremely active community as well with a large and detailed set of tutorials all on all the ways you can use your droplet. Want to deploy Docker? Set up a personal VPN? They got you covered. And it's so easy to get started. You can deploy an SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. Absolutely true. The call to action here would be that DigitalOcean has an incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing. Servers start at only $5 a month. There is also hourly pricing available, starting at less than a penny an hour. But we're going to make it so you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. If you go to DigitalOcean.com and create an account, once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code FLOSS, that's F-L-O-S-S, just like the name of the show, for a free $10 credit. $10. You can run a $5 server for two months for that. There's plenty to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do. That's DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code F-L-O-S-S in the billing section for a $10 credit. And we really thank DigitalOcean for being a sponsor of Floss Weekly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring our guest. Pablo, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. And where are you speaking to us from? I'm speaking from London at the moment. Today, it's London. Tomorrow, who knows? Maybe Madrid. <laughs> so you're a traveling man. Yeah. In, uh, actually, in a month, it will be Cardiff. There is a nice uh, convention then. Uh, you know, it's DjangoCon. So, yeah, you, you know, you never know. But, you know, today, it's the not-so-sunny London. I'm joining the, you know, Flows Weekly from here. Great, great. So we, I have lots of questions about both uh, Agile in general and uh, Taiga in particular. Uh, I don't, get, can you give us sort of the, the, the problem that Taiga is solving? Well, Taiga is solving, I think, two main problems. Uh, one, it's about the platform itself and uh, what it does. So it's features, it's functionality. And the other one is actually uh, the open source nature of Taiga. Um, so in terms of features, I honestly believe it is the, one of the best, let's say one of the best um, agile project management tool that you can get. So as long as you understand, and we can go into some detail you know, in a minute, the agile principles, you embrace that way of uh, building, uh, not just software really, but any, any, any product or any project, you, will, you should find Taiga really speaking your language all the time. Like it's the, uh, with that mindset already built in. Um, all the project management tools out there really try to cover too much. They want to be maybe agile, but also the typical waterfall model or, you know, any other system methodology. So you get, you, you finally get like this huge platform that tries to do everything, you know. So Tiger. I think solves uh, beautifully the uh, agile way of basically develop, developing any project. 
So let's back up again. A lot of our audience probably is not familiar with Agile or is familiar with it in the way that I'm familiar with it, which is badly implemented by many, many different groups who didn't totally get the picture. How is Agile different from the the traditional model or say, as I described in the opening, you know, driven by bugs being the only way that you're solving things? How how is Agile different and what, what advantages does it have? Well, I think Agile, uh, which actually came in, in, in a way from the software world, is many things. You start from that and then you know, go uh, to other fields. It's basically acknowledging that you don't really know what is what you want uh, from the start for uh, any project. Mm. It's acknowledging that you have some vision maybe, some horizon, some idea, some strategy, but you're really humble enough to start with some basic uh, version, prototype, you know, uh, whatever you can call it, and adapt it uh, after you get some feedback, you know. So you're willing to start with little information, you're willing to take the risk of starting a massive project without having all the variables uh, like known. But you, it's not only that you're humble, it's that you, are, you have the appropriate tools so you can adapt to change. You know, it's, it's also a way of embracing change. It's also a way of how your team works. It's also a way of how you manage different stakeholders, you know. So um, Agile is, is here basically coming from the software world to basically say the obvious. You don't know what you're going to build really. Uh, you, and, and, less, and less you are able to predict the future in such a way you could actually start with a list of requirements, you know, fine grain list of requirements and actually implement that and nothing else, you know. Or any changes come within your team, you know, with, without interacting with the, with the exterior. So Agile is basically the way when software development started to be so complex. It has been always, you know, always been complex, but so complicated, you cannot predict even what you want in a month time. Then Agile is here to say, okay, this is, this is the tool we can, we can start using. Or if not the tool, the mindset. Um, so no, you do not have this, you know, state machine. Like we, you start with the analysis and then you go to design and then you do some backend development and then you go to, you know, whatever data modeling and then you do integration sequentially, you know, you start by creating some very primitive version of what you want and then evolve from that. And the good thing about, uh, about Agile is that it's focused on production ready prototypes always even the first version should be deployed. It's about delivering value. Um, Unfortunately, I think over the past, let's say two years, Agile is is considered officially a buzzword. Uh, Right? I mean, it's... Yeah, definitely. uh, Definitely. So, but in a way, Open source was the buzzword, I think. Uh, I remember 2003, 2004, open source, you know, open source was catching up in, in, the, in the business arena, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a buzzword, but it doesn't invalidate what it provides, the meaning, you know, uh, what, it, what it's about. So I think we will, as, as open source or any other term, um, that it really has some weight to it, some meaning. I think we will overcome this uh, two to three year buzzword uh, environment that it's not, it's not being harmful, but it's doing uh, a particular type of um, hit uh, damage, which is um, I've tried it and it doesn't work for me. You know, mm. yeah. um, I've really, I have a lot of experience in basically going to companies or teams or even open source projects that, you know, they, they in a way, they're developing similar to Agile uh, principles. And they, th- they always think, invariably, they always think they are so unique 
the problem <laughs> at hand. They are, it's so special. The team is so different from you know what you typically get. So I wonder what you typically get. The agile won't work for them, you know, and they forget to read the literature because agile is a way of doing things. It's not a set of recipes, you know, that you have to follow. It's a way of really uh, developing something, and it's a framework. So you can actually adapt yourself to that framework or, your, or that framework to, to your team or to your product. So okay. unfortunately, that's. Uh, Uh, people sometimes don't get that they actually have some flexibility in order to be agile and and do it right, you know. Okay, I think I'm getting the sense of it, and we're almost out of time, so thank you for... No, no just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> great, great answer, though. You covered a lot of the things I was going to ask next, and you just kept answering them, so I just kept shut up here, which is a great way for an interview to go. Um, uh, so uh, one of the things I understand about agile is that rather than having a complete document of every, all the requirements that don't deliver the product 1.0 until all this is done, is that instead you have a number of things that the product owner, which is also something I think interesting about Agile, is that there's, the product owner works closely with the development team. Um, so here's a list of things, and the developers say, well, if you want something in, you know, if you want something in, in six months or two weeks or whatever, it's going to be just these three, three or four things. We'll work on these first. We'll give you a release in two weeks, and you can see whether that worked or not. Is that a fair assessment of the difference between this and the traditional waterfall model? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it um, works that way. Uh, it's about priority. It's about choosing what is really uh, giving you more value and allowing you to ask the important questions as quick as you can. It's about selecting those features that allow you to fail fast, you know, to clear the tech in, in you know, the right, wrong, wrong. So the, the product owner is a key role. It is, it is the person that owns the, that list of requirements uh, in agile terminology that would be the, that would be the product backlog. Mm -hmm. And the, the product backlog could doesn't need to be very, you know, uh, I mean, uh, as long as you have the top priority requirements uh, well-defined, ready, as we call them, you can, in a way, forget about the lower priority type of requirements <coughs> until they actually reach a point in which they are probably candidates for the team to go out and work on them. So, um, typically, what Happens the product owner has this product backlog, uh, does the prioritization. The team will go then and estimate those user stories, the, the requirements, called in Agile, in Scrum, in this particular mode of Agile, which is Scrum. So basically, with that estimation, roughly, you get a sense of speed. You, know, you get a sense of, okay, so we are able to cope maybe with these first 10 requirements, these 10 user stories, because they sum up Uh, you know, 50 points, and we think we can do 50 points uh, of effort, of work, this uh, sprint, you know, which is a fixed time kind of, uh, you know, two weeks, three weeks work. Those are called sprints. So, mm -hmm. and after that sprint, you get a demo, and you have to show the pro donor that you've done what you were supposed, you were committed to, to done. That's very important, it's a, it's a team commitment. And then uh, during the demo, maybe there's some feedback and some changes, and then you get the new sprint. And maybe you have to carry over with some, uh, you know, user story that wasn't really nailed, or you know, uh, and you look at the backlog and you choose the next 50 points worth of uh, user story, and that's how it works. It's really easy to to really understand uh, in the first place. It is the details of the methodology, you know, uh, what makes a good product owner, what makes a good team, what make, makes a good user story. You know, that that are kind of things. They are not so easy to, to get in the first place. Awesome. Awesome. And how did Tiger come about? The platform itself? Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Well, we, um, the, the, the company that created Tiger, uh, it's called Kaleidos. Mm -hmm. And this company works uh, with the way we do, I mean, what we do for a living is we will uh, be the technological uh, partner for startups, okay? Mm -hmm. And we need a, a 
a proper tool. We need it, a proper tool. And we, and, and, and we are basically 100%, if not, well, let's say, yeah, very pro open source type of company. So we would never use any tool so important for our workflow uh, that wasn't open source. So we, we were using uh, open source project management tools, but none of them were really designed with Agile in mind. So what do you do? <laughs> yeah, you create your own platform. You, know. you start developing as an in-house project, and uh, some developers start in doing that. And then we have this uh, thing called Pi Week at Caledos, the Personal Innovation Week, where every six months you get this entire week, so this week hackathon. So uh, uh, all, you know, every employee at Caledos can actually develop whatever they want, provided it's open source, it's using open source, and they can demo something by Friday. So they will, you know, basically the weeks uh, prior to the Pi Week, people will start doing this marketplace of ideas, of talent, you know, all that. But, and so Tiger, uh, which wasn't called that at that time, Tiger, uh, was in a way accelerated at one of those Pi Weeks. And it looked so great, people were so in love with what they had seen, even with this early stage, that we started to use it internally as our own platform. And three years later, not three months, three years later, we thought we were ready to launch it publicly. Um, so that was how Tiger was born, because we weren't able to find the right tool for our Agile uh, methodology that was also open source, really open source. Hmm, that's, um, that is really interesting. I mean, uh, people are saying in the chat room there that they, they, they're trying to get... Um you know, a feel for exactly what Tiger is. So it's it's a platform that you can use to manage your projects, basically, with, you know, using an agile methodology. That would be the, I suppose, the, is that is that fair? Is that the good in a nutshell description? Yes, although when you started the, uh, the uh, interview, you mentioned uh, one of the future, uh, hmm. you know, things that was actually a secret. So you basically. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. No, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, uh. Sooner or later, we were going to release that uh, information to the public. But so far, what we can tell, what's Tiger today? It's uh, mm. it's an online platform. Uh, you can deploy it locally, you know, behind your firewall, or you can use our cloud service. Uh, it's uh, a GPL version three uh, licensed software. Mm. Um, it's built on top of Django, uh, Python Django, and it's mm -hmm. using uh, PostgreSQL and using Angular JS. And the features it brings is basically you can create any you, you log in, you, 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 you register for an account, and you can create a product. And that product can have either Scrum as a way of managing your project, or Kanban, which is a different approach to Agile, but quite interesting, mm. uh, depending on the project, or both. You can have issue management system, it's all it's built in. You have video conferencing, you have webhooks, you have GitHub integration, you have uh, many, many things. You have wiki, of course. Um, you have the typical things you would expect, a basic, let's say basic, but smart uh, uh, project management tool provides you with. So, um, Unless you really you need any, a very specific feature that you find uh, in any other tool, and you really that was killer feature, probably for eighty percent of the cases, Tiger is going to work uh, for you, mm. even if you don't think agile. Because Tiger is not all saying you you know all the time you have to think agile. You have no, it's not that way. It's just it sits there and lets your project flow in an agile way, but it doesn't really constantly remind you you're not being agile or at all. I mean, that's not the way uh, it should work anyway. And it doesn't have um, a lot of features. It only has the ones that it makes sense. The rest of the things you need for a project, we leave that to you to implement them physically, like really physically. Um, we don't want to create any potential, you know, any, any possible feature that we want to have on Tiger. And we have a lot of requests, really. I would like dashboards, I would like reporting, I would like this workflow, I would like this specific type of issue. And 
many times we have to say, yeah, but that only works for you. you know? uh, so we have the API, you can create anything on top of that API. So people are happy with that. Mm, I noticed on uh, on your GitHub page there, there's, there's loads of different projects that people are building with this, as you say, with the API and stuff. So, I mean, you could take it and, and do something different with it, you know, implement, as you say, your own tool. Something people are asking um, is about integration. I know you, you said that it can do kind of, a, for 80% of projects, it should do everything that you need. Um, I'm just wondering if you if you had an existing project and you were thinking of, of using something like Tiger, and you had, say, a bug tracker that you already had a load of stuff in, could you integrate that via the API? Would you have to write that yourself, do you think? There's already people doing that okay. um, through the API. So the way this, uh, this is a technical uh, a podcast in a way, so I can, I can, I can go into some detail. <laughs> yeah, go for uh, it. I guess, I guess. So, so um, Taiga, really, all the business logic, or most of it, it's really using the backend and exposing a rich API. Uh, you know, uh, with JSON and, and RESTful and all of that. So everything you can do, you can do it through the API. The web interface, it's actually just one client using the API, right? So uh, we actually have in development uh, n cursors clients, so console-based uh, uh, clients that will mm. use the same API. So um, there's lots of people out there uh, having their own, maybe they use, uh, let's say, uh, Bugzilla, or they use uh, Mantis, or they use any, any tool they, they use, even reporting or whatever. They only have to actually connect to the API, use the appropriate credentials, and they get lots of information. They can interact, they can activate triggers, hooks, whatever they want. And they have all the power of Taiga. It's just that they are not using the web interface for that specific integration. So they can actually listen for events, uh, mm -hmm. make some magic, you know, behind the scenes, and tell Tiger to move uh, one uh, issue from one state to, the, to another, you know, easily. And all of that is actually configurable, uh, most of it's configurable uh, via the admin uh, page for Tiger, which is something I'm really proud of. It, typically, the admin pages, the admin back office mm -hmm. for any uh, tool of this sort is really like, you don't want to go there, it's just many configuration mm -hmm. variables and that. Well, Tiger li likes you to go there and really change things all the time. So yeah, Excellent. people can safely go and try. It's well documented and there's people, I think a month ago we got LDAP integration, uh, mm. third party contribution, you know, easy. It's a pull request, we accept it and that's it. Excellent. And um, kind of backtracking a little bit, you mentioned that it's um, licensed under the Afero GPL version 3, um, which I'm a big fan of, but it, it's not one of the most common licenses still these days. So I'm just curious, what, what were the reasons for choosing that kind of license? Hmm. Interesting question. I, I, I call that extreme open source SaaS model licensing. Uh, <laughs> it is... We, I mean, we could have gone for, I mean, BSD-like or for GPL, you know, the, the good and all GPL was two. But we really wanted to embrace this new era of uh, cloud software out there that's using open source in a way that it's actively speaking. In, it, it, we bring to the table this debate that we really want everyone to share what they're doing. And uh, we decided to go AGPL because we thought that we weren't able probably to build rapidly something that we would like to have in let's say one or two years. So it was uh, also pragmatic. So, and we would benefit from maybe development done by other people that were using their own instances of Tiger, and they would be forced to uh, you know, public their source code if they had any, they made any changes. You know. mm -hmm. um, but also it was uh, a statement, uh, a statement that you don't choose AGPL by chance. You, don't, you mm -hmm. don't do that just because you randomly pick one license. That's a funny name. You really do that because you want all the people maybe to understand why you did that and understand this this world of connected services, but not uh, sharing the code or the, or, the, or the changes to the code, 
、mm, we're a bit afraid of that. We're a bit concerned about that.、Mm, bringing a, a different internet.、Um, interconnection is great. Open data is okay. But I think AGPL has has a, has a meaning and, and a purpose. And, and we thought Tiger would be a, a way of promoting AGPL too.、Mm. Um, that's really good to hear. As、um, I mean, I don't want to get too preachy about it, obviously, but、um, you know, I think you're right. No, you don't.、Uh, th- when I saw it was AGL V3, I thought, well, yeah, as you said, there's no way you just accidentally pick that. You have to pick it because you believe in the philosophy and and、yeah. the you know the approach and so on. And, and I think that's really cool that people are doing that kind of stuff. <laughs>、um, we got we got some more、um, questions coming in as well from the IC. People are, are wanting to know if they are familiar with. Um, agile development, for example, will Tiger just very quickly make sense to them, or do you need to know about agile development to to use it? Well, yes and no.、Um, we've seen people completely new to agile that really get it really quickly.、Uh, Tiger、yeah. doesn't have a wizard or or tool or anything like that.、Uh, that's down, you know, list of priorities, <laughs> but.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Uh, it's certainly intuitively enough basic idea. As long as you've managed some projects in the past, or you know what a task, dependencies, states, you know, people in charge, watchers, things like that, you quickly what's going on there. You you can actually get a very very primitive way of doing agile, and Tiger just will just help you. Now, recently,、uh, our friend Nitish、uh, from OpenSource.com is contributing with. A lot of articles to the to the blog, and those articles are a way in, in you know partly is a way to introduce people to agile easily, so that when they use Tiger, everything like makes sense, you know,、uh, more、mm-hmm. sense. It doesn't explain. It's a, it's not like a tutorial tool. It's just about what you expect and where to find things in general.、Uh, so, I think people savvy enough with.、Um, Project management in general, having been in a team, things like that,、mm-hmm. probably they would like to start with Kanban,、uh, the other mode, the other, the other typical agile approach. You know, where you have basically state machine and you move things from one column to the other, and that means something to you. You know, like status.、Mm. Uh, Trello is、uh, is an online platform that is being very successful just by doing Kanban. So and that's millions of users. So that has to be easy to to understand and to use. And Tiger has Kanban mode. So just with that, I think they they would get it. Yeah, I was going to mention Trello actually because that's something I've used.、Um, and、mm-hmm. uh, if anyone's not familiar, yeah, it is that system of you have your cards and you move things between the columns for you know things that need to be done, things that are in progress, things that are done, all that kind of stuff.、Um, how how would you compare what you're doing to something like Trello? Well, the the feedback we have really、uh, from from users coming from Trello to Tiger, and that's happening、uh, all the time.、Mm-hmm. It's basically it's Trello on steroids. <laughs> it's like it, yeah, in some way, even I think the Kanban mode for Tiger is really simple, and we, and we really like the, the simplicity of it. But for some reason, Trello is even simpler. Okay. Even in, in too simple、uh, for people to be able to evolve the way they're managing their project. Like they start happy with Trello, but if the project or the team grows massively, then it'll you know it just start crumbling down. And then they move to Tiger, and it's like the Kanban mode.、Uh, just the Kanban mode is like Trello, but with more things attached to it. So I think if someone is familiar with Trello, they would see Tiger as the the next. Version now Trello cannot do that because Trello、mm-hmm. needs、uh, to appeal to a massive audience. Okay, while Tiger can explore some niche markets, so we can go a bit further you know, and be have a three four features. Now we do、uh, Trello does things we don't and probably won't ever.、Uh, but if you're happy with Trello, but you, you look it, it looks like it's.、Um, Too tight now. Then Tiger's command mode is Trello with asterisks. And this actually, this is a quote for for many people. It's like they they like this phrase, you know,、uh, Trello with asteroids. So, so I think that's my answer. Hmm. Excellent. And、um, I noticed that、um, 
one of the things with Trello is I think it's proprietary. I'm fairly certain it's a proprietary product, so you oh, can't it host is. it yourself. Yeah, okay. so that's a big bonus for in, in certainly, I mean, the, the name of the show gives a clue, but that's a big bonus for us. It's that well, you it are is. a free software I mean, sub-project, an open source project, yeah. And you, you, been, I'm sorry, sorry, go on. No, 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 there have been some uh, attempts to have a open source version of Trello, not by Trello, just people, you know, around the world. Mm, but I think um, it they don't have enough appeal, extra appeal, uh, because Trello is so... I don't know why they haven't succeed. So only copying Trello, just doing the same thing Trello does, and that being open source, doesn't seem to get much traction. Uh, but Trello definitely is proprietary software, even though they're probably using open source software, you know, of course, uh, and their mm. technology stack. But Trello is, is closed. Hmm. Um, we got a question from Retro D in the IRC channel, who um, says, "I've uh, I had a huge problem keeping teams focused on the product. Um, would I have to expend a great deal of development <laughs> resources in integrating Tiger into my system?" That's quite a difficult question, actually. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, that's a problem. So, it is a problem of the team or or the or the product. You know, they have to develop hmm. the way the way Tiger tries to address uh, one of the key things on projects is the team needs to enjoy the project. The, um, needs to control it, needs to enjoy it. Uh, typically, the tools that you, you normally use is the other way around. You are constantly being uh, you know, um, looked upon. Like the, the tool is actually uh, auditing you all the time. Did you do this? Did you do that? You know, you're expected to do this. And it's like a machine asking you questions. And you have to fill a lot of information, fill in a lot of information. While Taiga is basically asking two or three questions to what we call consenting adults. So you typically get the permission to do stuff instead of asking for permission, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and you start seeing that you are in control. You have the, the you are in, in command. But not you, it's the team. And the way we, we, we have uh, addressed the team issue is by building this multidisciplinary concept about the team. So everything in Tiger speaks about the team and about different people and about the roles that different people play. So you can uh, create any role, you can assign any uh, sort of permissions to that role. And that role is there elsewhere, you know, in Tiger. You can find user experience role, the visual design role, backend. I'm just speaking about software, but you can get marketing, journalist. And you start seeing that concept of a role, uh, first class citizens, you know, all around the platform. So I guess for people that have like, I don't know, big teams with a massive project ahead, I think um, Tiger, just the setup allows people to feel like they're in con under control. You know, like they see this backlog, they understand they have this uh, epic stuff to do. It's okay, they don't have to go through the entire list and, 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 and write down everything. They have this multidisciplinary team concept. So, they can, and so the questions Tiger will ask will depend on your role. But this is a very important concept, contenting adults. Mm -hmm. Tiger by principle, believes you know what you're doing. A different story, a different thing is it will log everything you do. Okay? So you get activity mm. of everything. So we can go back and see that you did something you shouldn't be doing. Tiger uh, will, by default, allow you to do stuff, which is not for everyone. This, this, this model uh, mm. of allowing the team to, to work that way is not for everyone. I've seen that. Hmm. It's in, it's interesting because um, what you, what you describe, yeah, it, it kind of it seems to me that the whole responsibility thing. If you're given responsibility to be able to do things without asking the boss or, or whatever, that can be really good for some people because they you know they get to do things, they get to keep things going, and other people are scared by that responsibility. And maybe that's partly it. You know, if you're a little bit afraid or you're not confident, and you suddenly have this responsibility, you you may be kind of trapped in the headlights, as they say. And that's one of the reasons I get this. I'm so unique. Uh, kind of answer to Agile. Uh, most of the time, I'm so special, I'm so unique, I have this particular problem you can solve with Agile. 
has to do with I have to people cannot do whatever they want, let's say freely. Okay, I need to control what people are doing. I, I need to automate things. I need to automate things the way it doesn't allow people to do things freely. So um, yeah, uh, I think uh, it, there is an underlying principle. Uh, which is lean management, which is unfortunately also a buzzword these days. But basically, lean is to take empower any any member of the team with the most, you know, the, with the fullest responsibility you can get, and see what happens. And it's not for everyone, uh, but when it works, it's it's amazing. It just you really get uh, the most out of the team. And I say a team; it's always about the team. And I think the open source uh, communities out there, uh, in a way, they've been working this way, you know, empowering people to uh, actually share and, and contribute back uh, and then having feedback, but allowing them in the first place to do some code and, 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 and you know, do some pull requests and, and, and contribute and then see what happens mm. instead of mm. saying no by default and then, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, another quick question from um, IRC. Um, people are asking, can I attach images or, and documents and so on, files essentially, to um, Tiger Kanban notes? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but you don't see that like in the summer review. That's why they think you have to go into detail view of the Kanban card and then you see attachments, you see... Uh, you know, images, you, you display those images automatically. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, that's that's pretty basic. But you don't see preview mode on yet. You don't see preview mode on, about those files uh, in the Kanban view. But yeah, yeah, that's a yes. Okay, this is all sounding fascinating. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my clients to actually use this instead of the really weird complex systems. I mean, I don't know of anything worse than Unfuddle for a bug tracker, but that's what my primary client is using. It's just a horrible <laughs> system. I mean, anything is better than that. And and uh, and there, are, uh, my group uh, in particular in, at my primary client is using uh, Trello and just started using Trello. And I want to go in, you know, next week when I'm back down south and uh, demonstrate this. Is there a is there a quick thing that I can do? just with the with the Kanban part where people yeah. go ooh ah and go let's just immediately switch to this and then start adding in the other parts to the rest of our system is there some is there a quick demo that I can do that will really make them go wow and zow <laughs> well any demo you want to have that impact you know you have to prepare in advance okay <laughs> sure I understand uh, that but I think uh, like in 10 minutes 20 tops yep. you can create like uh, demo project, you just go, register, log in, create mm -hmm. a project, select from two basic modes, Kanban, you select Kanban, that would be my suggestion. You go to Kanban mode and you basically uh, go to admin and then you say, okay, my columns are going to be this, you know, not the default ones, just this or this or that, that makes sense for the demo. Yep. And then you go back to Kanban, you now see all that, uh, you know, already applied and you start creating bulk uh, cards. So you can just create uh, quickly, just you know, uh, uh, a card per line, and you start writing things that make sense. Okay, so the demo has some content, I'm not just Lauren Ipsum, and mm -hmm. you put some interesting stuff there. You create suddenly you get like 20 cards, and you start moving them all around the place, you know, to fit into the um, to the columns. Then you go back to admin and start putting some what you call the whip limit to Kanban. So you decide that mm -hmm. for, for instance, the design column. Three is the maximum you should allow anyone, or the column should allow, you know, work in progress for design. So you go back and you start seeing red lines, you know, like warning, uh, some alerts there. You, block, you then go into details, I don't know, three or four of them. You attach some images. You, uh, you, well, you select your avatar, so it's, you know, very nice uh, mm -hmm. looking guy. And you maybe block some of it, and you say, this, uses, this uh, card is blocked because I need first to, you know, this third party to do this. Then you see it's red, uh, very bright red on the, on the Kanban. You start playing. I, get, I mean, I can assure you, in 10, 15 minutes, you get, a, a, like, a project that has been there for four months, you know. Wow. Um, and and, and when you do that. Tags and all that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
when, when you, you do that, you, like like if one like if one ta one card is blocked by another card, is there a way to represent that electronically, or is it just in the text? It's in the text. It's uh, it's you read it and you interpret it as a human being. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, great, what, cool. what, you, what you have is tasks, uh, and there is a way to ref re reference tasks from other tasks, but visually, uh, in Kanban mode, uh, every card should be independent. Uh, formally speaking, but you can read why it's blocked and then you can understand. All right. And I only discovered the wonderful blog this morning and I was actually just, you know, eating it all up. So I have to go back and read all those before I take uh, <laughs> doing this demo next week. Um, cool. Um, uh, Angular JS, uh, who chose that? And and because it, it made it beautiful. It really looks like a really uh, polished product. Uh, well, uh, how, why, why Angular and why not one of the other frameworks? That, that's maybe a question for Alejandro Alonso, the CIO yeah. at Kaleidos. Uh, but it's basically the framework we've been using successfully uh, for several uh, projects, uh, mm -hmm. not, not only of our own, but for external startups that uh, you know, will hire us. And uh, it's a good code, uh, it's uh, robust, it's uh, reliable, it's fast. And allows us to live in this world where we have this decoupled architecture uh, uh, rather nicely. When we have this backend with an API and we have this Angular heavy front end that actually is just asking for the right information when it's needed. And of course, you need some fairly modern browsers to uh, keep up, you know, with with Angular. And but then. You just said one of the coolest things we, we think Tiger uh, brings to the table, and it's, it's beautiful. Really, it looks beautiful. It's, it's sad, but uh, people, one of the, uh, some people said it doesn't look like open source because it's so beautiful, you know, and it was, yeah. okay. We had to go past that stage at some point. Um, so, but this, this has a collateral effect, a very nice one. When you have a beautiful interface, not only developers will use it more, but certainly designers, user experience consultants, marketing people, you know, people that actively develop a product, but typically will stay away of your tool. It's the tool for the backend developers, you know. I, I just go and, you know, there's this constant fight between the, like, the techie people and the creative people. And the creative people just hate all these tools. And one of the reasons is because they're ugly, you know. It's, it's that simple. They don't like them because they are ugly. And for the first time, we've seen designers and user experience, marketing, you know, people really with this um, desire to use a beautiful tool, using it and join it. So it's not just uh, AngularJS that's providing the look and feel. It's allowing us to bring that. But it's also uh, this multidisciplinary team concept to actually, to be true, you know, because actually the entire team is using Tiger. I think that is one of the key things people sometimes don't, don't uh, see, you know, uh, that it, these tools are not used by the entire team, and that is bad. And I think Tiger tries to solve that. Yeah, and as much as Unfuddle is bad in terms of being a bug tracker, I'm probably going to get sued by them now. Uh, it's it's at least it's at least not not ugly like Jira is. Now I'm going to get sued by them. So <laughs> Jira is just <laughs> ugly, and I'm so glad I'm not working with Jira anywhere anymore as well. So anyway, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this this this, this looks really beautiful. Uh, I, I've got to be, we're almost out of time, so I got to really get to some of the in interesting project questions. What's what's your funding model for this? How is this going to you know how how you got people how are you going to pay people to work on this? Hmm. Well, three years we were basically funding this uh, by taking the revenue from the projects that we get paid for, you know, <laughs> from other yeah. startups, and we just put that money into the internal development of uh, Tiger. Now it came to a point where we just needed to more resources, more people, you know, and, and to predict, uh, you know, a roadmap, something not exactly the futures, but at least like some, something big. So uh, we decided to ask for money, uh, and we created uh, the company. It's actually a US-based company. Uh, this is important because we are a Madrid-London-based company, Kaleido. So we decided to go to the US for Tiger. Mm -hmm. And uh, we asked money. And so the, the first people to put money were the employees themselves. Okay. Not only the employees being working on Tiger, they actually get some uh, shares just because they had worked you know, 
weekends and, on, and that, but also employees, just colleagues, you know, uh, people working at Calibus. The next people we, we found uh, were willing to put some money uh, were our clients uh, individually, you know, like person, uh, people, real people that uh, were, had enjoyed, you know, how we, we performed in the past and they were willing from their own savings to, to give us money. And then we had some uh, interest investment from uh, my co-CEO, Ricky Posner and, and his family. Now that was the seat round A. Uh, we are now past the seat round B, where we've uh, went, you know, we went to engage with more, let's say, angel investor type of um, money, and it, that was easy. Uh, I mean, easy. It was we, we we got the money we needed in like a month, uh, and we're speaking here like two thousand, two hundred thousand dollars seat right round A, and about four hundred thousand dollars seed round B. So basically Tiger is in a way paying Kaleidos to continue to develop this open source tool. Um, and this is we every month we get, you know, we get paid now to develop open source. And who's paying? Well this company called Tiger. Who are the owners of Tiger? Well the employees and uh, and some friends and family uh, from Kaleidos. So it's still is a family business in a way. But there's there's some there's some money, you know, uh, now this uh, going, going in. Is there anything on the long-term roadmap about maybe moving the software to a more of a, a governance model of an independent foundation or something? Yeah, this is, this is uh, just the way it is now because it's so uh, easy for us to, to, to continue with this business as usual. It's like we treat Tiger as uh, yet another customer, you know, like a startup. And, and so logistics-wise and everything, it's, it's really easy. But that will has to change this year. I mean, towards the end of the year, we will have uh, a different model, and then Tiger will have its uh, own, you know, employees or you know, its own infrastructure. And we still far from understanding or you know uh, the exact model of that. But uh, surely we will, we will have to change, you know, to try transfer to just do uh, all the the uh, work to Tiger itself. But at the moment, it's uh, easy, it's, it's quite agile in, in, in the business kind of uh, mindset. So, but yeah, it's, we're now in a transition uh, stage where we have to start thinking more. Tiger has to lead on. And, and so uh, you're offering uh, paid hosting at this point, or are we still sort of in a beta mode? Uh, can you describe what the current state of the project is? Is it usable today too? Yeah, it's uh, the, the beta ribbon is there because we still think there might be some issues sometime, and uh, I don't know. It's uh, we prefer people to understand it's 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 better, but it's production ready. People are using this privately or using our cloud service uh, with you know for really critical uh, projects, uh, more than forty thousand projects already on our cloud uh, host version. Now the money. Is uh, uh, is um, the pricing model is basically private projects you get you have to pay. It's very similar to GitHub in that regard. We are still, you know, going over how many private projects are needed, so you start paying. Okay? We don't want the first private project to start the pricing model to be activated to the, to activate the mm. paywall. Um, so that's uh, and we haven't activated that yet because we have. Many other things that we want to bring to the table, for instance, what you mentioned uh, you know, at the beginning, you know, some sort of e smart way to get people involved in your project. And uh, so we first want to launch all these new uh, exciting features and then activate the paywall. So people really can mm, see if it's interesting you know, to them to start paying. At this point, I don't know. I, I don't want to lose you know, so, many, so many uses just because I, I was wanting like, you know, I needed this $5 per month, you know, because thankfully we don't need the money at the moment. We need to focus on product development and, and make sure we're doing things right and, and answering support at tiger.io, the mailing list, you know, uh, listen to Twitter. Basically, Twitter is our second support channel, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. And so we, we are uh, maybe, I don't know, October, November, that would be... Uh, probably uh, for the table, I don't know. 
But that, that we need to make some money out of this. Uh, you, you know. Well, you, you got to pay people if, if this is their full time uh, thing. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can't I mean, it, it, it's ten people. You know, ten people. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's a, it's a you know, medium sized site, medium, medium sized uh, team. Uh, UX design, front end, back end. You know, sysadmin, DevOps. So yeah, we, we have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You can't just all do it for a labor of love. That's definitely not not the case in most projects. So, uh, well, some projects I say there are some very successful projects. Where everybody does this at labor of love. I understand that. I don't want to diss any of those. Many of those have been on the show. So, uh, we're almost out of time. Is there anything we haven't asked that you want to make sure our audience is aware of before we have to wrap up? No, I uh, I think um, uh, I want to stress the fact that we really, uh, you know, we are pro open source. Uh, we we um, open data, you can export, import any uh, project you've created or any Tiger instance to any other Tiger instance. We were really excited about what the community is uh, developing on top of the API. That is probably the, the coolest thing uh, of our day-to-day, -day, you know, daily work. And uh, basically, by summer, you know, something like July, August, we are going to release something very big that we hope is going to be a disruptive, sorry for using again password, disruptive <laughs> in, uh, in, 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 in the agile world and in, in, in talent management, you know, and, and team management. And we couldn't do that without Tiger. Uh, so, I think uh, if people stick with us and just follow us and, and read our blog post and maybe create one or two projects, uh, they will understand when we release this new, uh, it's not a feature, it's like an entire new platform connected to Tiger. They will understand and everything will make sense, you know. But uh, that we are developing in a way secretly, so we, we, yeah, it's a surprise really for, for people. <laughs> uh, but I mean, Tiger was actually open. Uh, the GitHub repo really is two years old. Nobody cared because nobody has shared that, you know. So uh, sometimes even if you have your code there out there in the wild, if you don't tell people, there's, you know, uh, people won't notice. Well, in this case, just in case people notice, the repo is a uh, secret. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so basically <laughs> try it, uh, see if it fits to you, and uh, give us feedback. It is. Good timing. It's always good timing for feedback, especially now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, I have to ask you my two required questions, or my audience will get mad at me. What's your favorite scripting language? Python. Ah, I figured. I heard Django earlier. Uh, <laughs> what is, it's, that's always a telltale sign. And uh, what's your favorite text editor? Emacs. Yay! I got one finally. You must be slightly <laughs> older than most of the people I asked the question of. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I see people, new people, you know, coming to GNU Emacs all the time and join it. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a matter of age, but yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I think it's that it's not the default editor installed in most modern uh, distros. So you know, everybody has Vim uh, somewhere, but hardly anybody has Emacs anymore. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you get it. Python and and, and Emacs. Okay, well, that's very good. Hey, you know, this is this is interesting. I, again, I want to have all my clients adopt this right away. Uh, I got. I guess I got a demo to prepare for next week. Um, yeah, but I think we'll. Uh, it sounds like you're on the right track. This really is an area that needed to be addressed, sort of with Greenfield and starting with new projects. And I love that it's open source, especially because that means I get to talk to you. Um, and, and then <laughs> and uh, and and it, it's. Uh, oh, I, you said the the GitHub repo that is your current code base that you're running on your platform, right? Yeah, it's exactly the same as we're running. Uh, okay, I think good, it's good. The, yeah, so you can. Uh, I mean. You can go to the repo, you can download the zip file, TG nice. set, whatever. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. the same. Okay, great, great. Just want to check on that because I heard something about something being two years old or something. But okay, I misheard. All right, well, thank you for being on the show, Pablo. Uh, really great show. Thank you very, uh, much. very much for having me. Really, I really enjoyed the interview. Very uh, mm -hmm. interesting to, to, you know, to see the questions about Agile first and then Tiger yep. as a yep. platform. That was our plan. All right. All right. Thanks. That was Pablo Ruiz uh, talking to us about uh, Agile in general and Taiga. What do you think, Dan? 
Yeah, really, really fascinating, actually. I mean, I, I, I admitted when we came in here that I, I hadn't had a lot of experience with agile development stuff, but but I have had the, the problems with bug trackers and other things and, and managing projects and so on. It can be so kind of difficult and time-consuming, and it can quickly spiral out of control. And this seems like a really amazing tool. And like you said, I mean, I'm not a big kind of design guy usually, but it looks amazing, and I know a lot of people will be drawn in by that, um, particularly, as Pablo was saying, some of the people maybe not on the coding side who are on more of the design and, and so on side. But um, it looks like it could be, if, if it gets the adoption, that's the key. If it gets the adoption, it could be could be really a massive tool, I think. I think so, because there's, you know, all the other tools, that well, every tool that I've used, I've hated in one way or another. This is pretty true. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be corners of Tiger that I'm not going to like, but the nice thing about it being open source is either I can fix it myself and then submit a, a pull request, or I can at least put it in the, in somebody's queue to go look at and maybe, uh, add, you know, maybe they never thought of doing this kind of a linking or something. I did like his answer, though, when he said when people want a certain way to do something one or the other, um, uh, that, that he said, well, then you're not, you're just not thinking quite agile yet, which is probably mm -hmm. true. I think everybody wants the, the new thing they're using to work like the old things they're using, no matter how bad that was. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a really crazy thing. It's like, it's like people coming to Perl over the years have wanted some other feature that they had. Like when Perl didn't have a switch statement or a case statement, people said, why isn't it in there? Well, you know, it really mm -hmm. doesn't fit the Perl way. And the, in fact, they put one in and then it really wasn't liked very well. And so they've actually kind of taken parts of it back out because it really wasn't a, it was, it was a misengineered uh, design and it just didn't fit well with the rest of the Perl philosophy. So I could, I can completely get when he's talking about the, uh, the idea that people are wanting things that actually in some ways probably held them back before, uh, but they didn't know about it. So I think he's, he's right on track with that. So anything else before we move on? We're almost out of time here. So. No, no, I, I was just going to say that's a traditional resistance to change, which I think we all bump into. Right, we we resist all change. Uh, I love the the Portland coffee shop that says that has the, the the tip jar or the change jar says, "If you fear change, leave it here." <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is, that is so clever. <laughs> all right. Speaking of upcoming guests, which is my awkward transition for the week, uh, we have uh, next week Deviation TX, which is replacement firmware for some RC transmitters. I'm hoping to get Aaron as the co-host on that because he's a maker guy. Uh, I haven't. I, I think I've asked him once. We'll see if that comes out. Copay, which is a follow-up to Bitcoin, it's a secure shared wallet. So if you want to have to have two signatures to release your Bitcoins, you can do it with Copay. Lucy, which is an open impl open implementation, try saying that three times, of uh, CFML. People are still using CFML, and this is an open source implementation of that. Weave, which is a Docker container-based deployment, kind of working a whole orchestration of many Docker containers having them all talk to each other. Uh, Veracrypt ought to be interesting. That's the heir apparent to TrueCrypt. Uh, talk to them about how they forked the code base and the kinds of changes they've made. Satnogs, which is satellite ground stations with commodity hardware. So if you want to put up your own uh, uh, Skynet, this will be the ground controller base station for that. Uh, we just added to the schedule Augur, which is decentralized open source prediction market application platform. That's a lot of buzzwords in a row. Basically, they're using the Bitcoin protocol to allow people to vote on things. Really interesting stuff. I don't understand it entirely, but I, that's why we bring the guests on. Uh, Dart is on the schedule now. Lars Back and Casper Lund, who are in charge of the Dart project. They really, the um, the people who are in, are in charge of it, just said that. On the short list, we still have Koha ILS. I'm waiting for the email from them. Why haven't they told me back yet? Oh, oh yeah, because the guy got robbed, so he has to get new equipment so he oh. can be on the show. Ew. Uh, Tuli App, which is application lifecycle management, similar to, um, actually in some ways, similar to uh, what we just talked about today. Uh, AngularJS, again, all, also on the short list, which will be great. I really want to get them on. I've been playing with Angular for myself. You can find out all these names and more at our big spreadsheet list linked from twit.tv slash floss. That's the homepage for the show and where all the shows show up right away. Uh, please, again, if you have people that aren't on that list, have the project leader email me, Merlin at stunnenge.com. And if you forget that, that is actually on the twit.tv slash floss page. Um, we are chatting live. We had some questions from the live audience. Again, we are at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time Wednesdays until four weeks from now. We have been moved even earlier. <laughs> great for people in Europe. Not so good for people who actually have to host the show on the West Coast, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, TNT needs a little bit more time, so we're spreading out just a bit earlier. We'll be at 8 a.m. starting about four weeks from now, uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can follow me uh, at Merlin, M-E-R-L-Y-N. I'm also on Google+, Plus, Randall L. Schwartz. Uh, a couple of plugs I want to make before I turn it over to you, Dan. Uh, my friend, Chris Marquardt, who appears a lot on other Twitch shows, I think on the, uh, the Tech Guy on the weekends. Um, wonderful guy. He's been in Nepal many, many times. He's taken people up to 
to actually climbing Everest, at least up to the first base camp, and taking wonderful pictures there. When the Nepal earthquake hit, he felt really moved, and he has created a book of about 80 wonderful pictures from there. And he's got a fundraiser going. If you go to tfttf.com slash fundraiser, you can pay from anywhere from 10 to $200 for the book. And all the proceeds are going directly to organizations he's personally familiar with in Nepal, probably even some individuals there that can get money right to where it's needed. So beautiful project, beautiful book. Uh, it's all yours for the uh, a small donation. Uh, uh, that is just actually, that's the only thing I want to plug right now. Uh, go ahead, Dan, anything you want to cover? Yeah, sure. Um, very quickly, I, I don't want to take up too much time, but um, I mentioned an event last time called Liverpool Make Fest, which is going to be for um, hackers, makers, anybody who wants to get creative with not just technology. You can do, you can come along and do you know wood carving or something if that's what you're into. Uh, <laughs> but there will be uh, there will be uh, a lot of tech stuff going on there. Um, it's on the 27th of June. I didn't have the date last time. 27th of June uh, in Liverpool in the UK. If you just search for Liverpool Make Fest. Uh, or Liverpool Make Fest 2015, it'll come up uh, on the website. I'm running some podcast uh, sessions there, workshops and so on, um, teaching people how to record and, and broadcast, uh, sorry, publish their stuff. Um, so if you want to uh, come along and, and get involved in that, you can do. Um, very quickly, uh, Liverpool Lug, I should mention, Liverpool Linux user group. We're meeting tonight, actually, it's too late for people probably to come now, but uh, in future, <laughs> if you check out Liverpool Lug, or Live Lug for short, um, you can come and check it out. We've got a talk on System D tonight, which is uh, quite controversial in the Linux world right now. Should be interesting. Uh, and finally, uh, the reason I can't be here next week is because I'm doing a gig, actually, at this time next week, roughly, uh, in the cavern in Liverpool. So if you go to danlynch.org, which is uh, at the bottom of the screen there, if you're watching the video, you can find out more about that uh, over there. Great, great. And Dan, thanks once again for co-hosting the show. No problem. Big or great. And we'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly. Floss Weekly.